Good morning, Grace Fellowship. We're going to look at a scripture together. It's a really short scripture. Philippians 2, verse 14. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Are you a complainer? Do you grumble and fuss? Are you someone with a bad attitude? Well, though none of us want to admit it, these kind of questions sometimes hit pretty close to home. And if you'll just take a day to just pay attention to what comes out of your mouth, okay? Or pay attention to what you think. Um, you know, sometimes complaining isn't speaking the words, but grumbling is just under your breath complaining. So for some reason, we believe that we deserve to have our way and whenever we don't get it, we complain. And actually there's a lot of complainers that were found um, in the scripture. Cain complained about his punishment from killing his brother being too severe. Aaron and Miriam, they complained to God because they felt like um, God was showing favoritism towards Moses, their brother. And then we had the, the children of Israel who complained constantly for 40 years. So even the disciples, you know, can be found um, grumbling sometimes in the scriptures. So today grumbling has become as natural as breathing. And even as Christians, we also have become gripers and complainers. That's why Paul wrote it in the, to the church in Philippians 2.14. Do everything without complaining and arguing. So complaining and arguing, when I think about that, um, it's actually a spirit, a self-centered spirit that comes from the enemy. So when we give in to that complaining and grumbling, we're giving the devil a foothold. It shows um, not only that we are self-centered, but that we also have an ungrateful heart. And in Luke, we read that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So not only are we, um, you know, we hurt God when we complain about things, but we also can hurt others. So think about something for a minute. Perhaps that there is nothing that demonstrates your relationship with God more than the words that come out of your mouth. So do you choose to see the best in every situation? Or um, do you choose to vocalize your negative thoughts? When we have thankful, tender, and obedient hearts, our words are sweet and they bring peace. And in Colossians 3, um, verse 15, I think, it says, let peace, let the peace of God rule. Well, when you're complaining and arguing, the peace of God cannot rule in your life or even in those around you. So let's pray this week that we allow God to rule and reign in our hearts and that our mouths speak only good things and things that bring life and health to those around us. Every day you have a choice and um, that choice is up to you. You may not have a choice whether you're, you know, you're probably saying, I don't have a choice about everything in my life, Sarah, and you may not. Like right now, you don't have a choice whether you're going to school in person or not. Um, <clears throat> things are decided for you like that. You don't have a, a, a choice where you're living right now. You're living where your parents want you to live. However, what you do have a choice is, is how you react to that and your attitude towards these situations. So let's just pray that um, we're not complainers and that we're not grumblers. And, you know, I have, I don't, I know you know people who do nothing but complain. And even though they don't mean to have that kind of a, a ill spirit about them, they just do. If you just pay attention to the words that come out of their mouth, <clears throat> it's always, you know, oh, I don't feel good. I didn't sleep well last night or, or, um, 
you know, you fix somebody a nice dinner and they say, oh, I like that dinner, but this is my favorite. I don't really care for this, but it was good. I mean, you know, let's just, let's try to watch the words that come out of our mouth and um, let's let the peace of God rule in our lives and in the lives of those around us. All right, all right, let's pray. Father, we come to you and we thank you so much for today. We thank you for this beautiful fall day that you've given us. We thank you for the opportunity um, just to, to be your children, Father, and to be King's kids. And we ask you that we just act like King's kids, Father. We ask you that uh, you just give us the words to say when, when we're faced with choices of whether to complain or um, to see the, the good in things. That, Father, you just always quickly remind us to shut out that sinful nature and that flesh and always see the beauty around us. We love you. We thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. And, um, Father, we just ask you that the next two weeks as we're faced as a nation with a big decision that the peace of God just rule and reign in our hearts and our lives. In your name we pray. Amen.